Our text this morning begins in Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. And for a while he refused. But afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes... Will he find faith on earth? The sense of today's parable is pretty simple. Right? I mean, Luke just lays it out explicitly for us in verse 1. He told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. That's the simple meaning of this parable. Like the parable of the dishonest manager that we looked at last week, this parable is a comparison. It's not an allegory. Right? So the, the unjust judge is not an allegory for God. Instead, he's meant as a basis of comparison for us to compare him over and against God. And the point is, if even an unjust judge, one who... I mean, it's, it's almost kind of comical how ungodly this guy is. He's even saying to himself in the parable, even though I don't respect God or man... <laughs> Right? Like, who talks to themselves that way? If even this guy can be moved to give justice, how much more justice will the holy God give to his people? Right? If even this guy can give justice, you can bet that God is going to give justice. Right? So understanding that this parable, though, understanding that it's not an allegory, I think will help us avoid misinterpreting something about what Jesus says here in this parable. The purpose of praying continually is not to pester God into answering us. That's not the reason why we pray continually, the reason why we pray without ceasing. Right? That's the reason why this widow keeps coming to the unjust judge. He has to be pestered into giving justice. That's not what the parable is trying to teach us about prayer. So what is the purpose of praying continually? Why are we told to pray without ceasing? It helps if we understand what we are praying for. And here, I think the widow of the parable is instructive because what does she ask for? Give me justice against my adversary. That is her request. And I think this is instructive to us. We are to ask for the justice of God. And we are to pray for victory over the adversary. Both in this life and in the final sense. Final victory over the adversary. Now, considering this, right, that this is the object of our prayer. That we're asking for God's justice that we're asking for victory over the adversary. I want you to consider this. When we ask God for these things, are we expecting to change his mind? Do we think that God does not already intend to establish his justice and to condemn the adversary to the lake of fire? Right? Do we not think that that has already been God's eternal purpose? Or, or are we, I mean, I don't think any of us really think that God's been kind of on the fence about whether or not he's going to establish justice. And he's been kind of uncertain on this matter of the adversary and what's going to happen to him. And uh, we, just, we just need preacher Caleb to come along and pray this prayer to kind of close the deal and convince God that he needs to be good. Right? Obviously, none of us think that whenever we are praying for God's justice or for victory over the adversary. 
It would be absurd to think that we are actually changing God's mind in this regard. So why are we to continually ask for these things? It goes back again to the purpose of the parable. As we read again in verse 1, He told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. We pray so that we don't lose heart. God's justice is coming, whether we're waiting for it, asking for it, or not. God's victory over the adversary is coming, whether we are asking for it or not. And it is available to us, by the way, in this life, right? Victory over the adversary in our personal struggles with sin and temptation. That's available to us. God offers that victory to us. It's on offer, whether we choose to accept it or not. Again, that's another question. The question of this parable, right, the question of continual praying is not, is God faithful? The question is, am I? That's the question of prayer. It's not, is God faithful? It's, am I faithful? And that is why we pray so that we may endure until the end. This is, as the Lord himself says, at the end of the parable, at the end of verse 8, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? If we intend to be found faithful, then we must be a people who prays without ceasing, so that we do not lose heart. So that we recognize that God's justice is coming, that his victory over the adversary is coming, and that we have sides to choose in this. Right? Are we, you know, we're going to be part of God's justice one way or the other. It's just what end do you want to be on? Right? We're going to be part of God's victory over the adversary. The question is what side are we going to be on when that victory comes? Are we going to be part of the triumph, or are we going to be part of the ones being triumphed over? And so the call this morning is to remain faithful in prayer so that we do not lose heart. The call is to trust in faith that God is good. He's not like this unjust judge. God will accomplish His purposes. He is always on the throne. He is always holy and righteous. And so our job is to live accordingly. We invite all to answer the call of the gospel. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ, that God is pushing forward His victory and establishing His justice through the work of Jesus Christ, that the Son of God came and dwelt among men, lived a perfect life, and gave Himself as a sacrifice for our sins on the cross so that we can be on the right side of that justice, on the right side of that victory. Believe in that good news. Turn away from sin. Confess Jesus as Lord. Be baptized into His death, burial, and resurrection for the remission of your sins. If you're subject to the invitation, won't you come as together we stand and sing.